Welcome to another edition of the Don Mafia Report. Ladies and gentlemen, you read the title correctly. Once again, we are stepping behind enemy lines, but this time I have brought out a contributor to the Denver Broncos. His name is Joe. Super cool guy, and we're going to dive into that shortly. Before I get into it, I need to give a giant shout out to one of my most recent Patreon contributors. It's going to be Brian Mack. Brian, thank you so much. You have no idea how much this helps out my channel. Say that you want to go the extra mile and support this channel, and you can do so by visiting the link in my description. If not, Don Mafia, you know the best way to support this channel is simply by smashing the f*** out of that like button. Besides that, Don Mafia, let's dive in. Yo, 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 Don Mafia. As promised, once again, for the fifth time this year, we are stepping behind enemy lines, and we're giving a little bit of a preview of some of our opponents that the Buffalo Bills are going to be facing off uh, in 2020. And today, I just so happen to bring out my buddy Joe Russ. Uh, he runs a very popular Broncos Instagram page. He just launched his YouTube channel. Basically an expert when it comes to the Broncos, so I figured that I'd bring him on so we could have a little bit of a conversation. Uh, so, Joe, why don't you go on ahead and why don't you introduce yourself to the Dow Mafia? Yeah, so uh, my name is Joe. I, I started representing Broncos country, and uh, I just try to be like the Broncos source for everything uh, on Instagram. Um, and so I'm just a Broncos super fan. It's my passion. I love covering them. I love just making videos for them. I love writing about them. I love hearing about them. It's just, it's just my passion, and it's, uh, it's just something that I try to do and uh, just start, try to give, like, my talents and covering the Broncos to the people. And, yeah, man, you know, like, I mean, we're definitely excited to have you on the channel. I definitely want to step behind enemy lines because, let's put it this way, it seems like the 2020 Broncos look a lot different from the 2019 <laughs> Broncos. And that's for Definitely. Sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, for sure. All right, so – Starting off, I mean, this is something that I think would be interesting to sort of start off on. I mean, like you guys made like a like some splash moves this off season. I mean, first <laughs> off, when it came to free agency, when it came to the draft specifically, um, but starting off right last year, Philip Lindsay and then maybe a little Royce Freeman were sort of like a running back by committee and stuff like that. But then you know, like once free agency went through, y'all ended up getting Melvin Gordon, who. Mm -hmm. I really wanted for the Bills. I really, really wanted for the Bills, but unfortunately, you guys ended up grabbing him. So, in your eyes, so are you seeing Melvin Gordon being the feature back right in that backfield going into 2020, or are you still going to see uh, sort of that running back by committee when it comes mm -hmm. to the Denver Broncos? Yeah, so uh, a lot of the mainstream NFL analysts and people out there and like ESPN and all that, they've, they see the Melvin Gordon addition they see that he's getting paid eight to nine million dollars a year over the next two years, and they just assume that he's going to be the featured back. I think myself and the majority of the diehard Broncos fans and people covering the Broncos out there are able to recognize the fact that Philip Lindsay is an extremely talented running back, and that to write him off would just be absolutely insane. It's a, uh, it's actually very interesting to see because Philip Lindsay has, I can't remember accurately, accurately, I think Philip Lindsay in his two years. He has two two thousand. Uh, he has two one thousand yard rushing seasons. I believe Melvin Gordon only has one or two of those in his four year career. So, but I think that they're going to complement each other just nicely and form a really nice committee. I was looking at some statistics and analytics, and one of the things that I think that John Elway brought him in is because Philip Lindsay was not good running out of shotgun. He was a very good under center running back. Despite mm -hmm. being a, a pretty small running back compared to the average, he's actually mm -hmm. very good at running inside the tackles. Meanwhile, Melvin Gordon actually excels outside of the tackles and in the shotgun, um, in the shotgun scheme. Meanwhile, when Melvin Gordon was under center, he wasn't nearly as productive. So I think that we're going to get a really nice balance here of Philip Lindsay in during these play action and these uh, under center packages with Melvin Gordon coming in and more of the passing downs and goal line opportunities as Melvin Gordon is the better goal line running back. But I think at the end of the day, you might see Melvin Gordon get more playing time, mm -hmm. but I think that the stats in terms of yardage gained is going to even out because Philip Lindsay is an absolutely very efficient running back. He doesn't need any more than 10 touches and he can get you 75 yards on the ground. No problem. And so, yeah, like I definitely agree. It's funny because like when you look at the NFL now, there's fewer and fewer teams as the years go along where there's just a feature back. 
right? Like, I mean, mm -hmm. now I feel like they're just making that transition right into, you know, running back right by committee. And so the Buffalo Bills have finally done it. I mean, we ended up drafting Zach Moss, who I'm absolutely ecstatic to watch, especially complimenting Devin Singletary, two mm. different types of running styles. And I think that Denver is going to be seeing the same thing when it comes to that addition of Melvin. And then also uh, with the other running back uh, with Lindsay as well. So, I mean, that's going to mm -hmm. be intriguing. So, all right. So, like mentioned previously, the Broncos, in my opinion, are an entire different team in 2020 than in 2019. So it's clear that you guys made some additions to your wide receiving room, your running back room, obviously. Um, what is a room within your organization right now that you're still most concerned about that you wish that your front office would have paid a little more attention to during this off season? Yeah. So if you ask Broncos fans, uh, almost every single Broncos fan will say the left tackle position. Mm -hmm. uh, we drafted Garrett Bowles three years ago. He was like the 20th overall pick. And he's just, he's, although he has everything physically necessary to excel at the left tackle position, he's one of the best physically talented left tackles out there. He just cannot stop from committing penalties. He's an absolute holding monster. There is multiple games so far in his career where he has deliberately just lost the team games because he's had two or three holds in a game. And we, we're losing 10 yards on those plays. It, it completely takes you out of the field goal range, maybe it forces a punt in a situation where you could have kicked a field goal. It just takes points off the board, and it's something that can't happen. Another position could really be the cornerback position. We lost Chris Harris Jr. this offseason to the Chargers. Um, and all we did uh, trade for A.J. Bouye. There is some questions because after Jalen Ramsey left in the Jaguars, A.J. Bouye did struggle a little bit. But mm -hmm. I think that A.J. Bouye will excel in Vic Fangio's zone scheme. Yeah. And then we also have Bryce Callahan, who was really good on Vic Fangio's Bears defense from two years ago. He missed the entire season last season. If he can get back on the field, I think the cornerback position will be able to hold it down the fort. But it's just all about maintaining health and just being able to fit in the Vic Fangio scheme. Sure, sure. That's very interesting, very interesting. Like – it sounds like that you're relatively happy with the moves that you guys ended up making. I mean, obviously, uh, so I'm sure that you probably weren't happy with the outcome of the 2019 season. Like, <laughs> right as me as a Buffalo Bills fan, like, I'm not happy, like, not unless, like, we make the playoffs. Like, now, like, once we did finally end up making the playoffs, like, now, like, my, like, my end game is taking that next step, like, being an AFC championship type contender. Uh, but it all starts with the division. Uh, so this really goes into my next question, right? Um, you're obviously sharing a division uh, with the Chargers, the Raiders, and the Chiefs. So <laughs> where are you seeing the Broncos finish? Or what's like your way too early prediction of where the Broncos are finishing within the AFC West this year? Well, I think my prediction and also the safest pred prediction would be second place. I, it I would be pretty much insane at this point to be able to claim that the Broncos would overthrow the Chiefs as the division champions as the Chiefs just came off of the Super Bowl, and they pretty much destroyed everybody in their way in the playoffs. So, mm -hmm. But I think that we're the better team than the Chargers and both the Raiders. We've shown that each of the last two seasons, despite having guys like Case Keenum and Joe Flacco at quarterback. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I don't think the Chargers will be enough with Tyrod Taylor, Justin Herbert at quarterback. I don't yeah. think Derek Carr is going to be anything more special than what he's shown us these last couple of years. Uh, mm -hmm. The Raiders could be a decent team, but I don't see them being anything better than mediocre. So I think that the yeah. Broncos will be able to snag that second place spot. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And what about playoffs? And so playoffs, especially with this extended scheme right now. Yeah, definitely. So I was actually really rooting for this, like this uh, one extra wild card spot because being in a division with Patrick Mahomes, you're not gonna be winning the division. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure. just, it's it's like the Bills yeah. with Tom Brady. Oh yeah, like, for sure, dude. Trust me, I am yep. so fucking ecstatic that he's out yeah. of the AFC. Yeah, <laughs> yes. yeah. exactly. Yeah. So I I think that we can snag at least one of those wild card spots. That's really my expectation, and I, I'm not gonna. I, I'm just gonna temper my expectation with that. I'm not gonna be able to say we're gonna win the division championship right here. Doesn't mean I wouldn't be ecstatic if we won it, but I, I don't think it's too realistic. I'm just rooting for that wild card spot. 
maybe making it at, uh, at least winning that wild card game, maybe making it into the divisional round would be cool. Yeah. Yeah, for sure, man. Well, like, honestly, it's funny because I was watching ESPN the other day and some analysts said that they had the Broncos winning the division. Oh, wow. And so I forgot who it was, but like, I mean, trust me. Uh, and so dude got like eradicated on Twitter and stuff like that about <laughs> it and stuff like that. But I mean, there are some analysts out there that think that they do actually have a shot. And really, in my opinion, I'm thinking that it really comes down to what your receiving room can do because Drew Locke finally has weapons, right? And I mean, mm -hmm. granted, I mean, he had like a really late start to 2019. We saw, we saw the glimmers of hope from him. So, I mean, realistically, it's really going to see if Jerry, Judy, and Hamler will really be able to take that like next step, like being an NFL caliber wide receiver sooner than most receivers do so here's my uh here's my next question right so we've seen those glimmers of hope from drew lock back in 2019 like like y'all had like a damn like qb <laughs> carousel in 2019 right oh, like i like yeah, i like didn't even know like who we were facing like going yeah. up in that week i was like okay and so is it brandon allen is it this yep. dude is it this dude so do you think that drew lock's the answer or would you say it's too early to tell? So, as looking at it realistically, it's very you, – you should probably say it's too early to tell. But just being able to watch Drew Locke and just being able to watch him and, and on film and interviews, he seems like he has everything you need to be a star quarterback in the NFL. He has the moxie. He has the poise. He has the anticipation. He has the arm talent. And I just – I'm, I'm a really big fan of him. I think that he can develop into a star this year. If he is going to develop into a star this year, I think it will be happening this year because the Broncos just set him up with so much talent. He's got Noah Fant tight end in his second year. His wide receiver room, like you said, Cortland Sutton, K.J. Hamler, Jerry Judy, who I thought was the best wide receiver in the entire draft. And then, of course, you got Melvin Gordon and Phillip Lindsay out of the backfield. The offense for, like, the last three, four – years now after Peyton Manning left has just been absolutely horrific. It's just been terribly stagnant. And I really think that Drew Locke will be able to definitely give a boost to this offense and maybe even turn into a star this season, which is the hope for most Broncos fans. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, like, definitely, like, supporting your team, you always want to see that quarterback, like, take that next step and be in the MVP conversation. So, I mean, that's going to be – that's going to be intriguing. So, last question – Right. So, I mean, we have something in common. Both of our teams just so happen to be on each other's schedule this year. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, we know what happened with the Bills and Broncos in 2019. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> I know. Shots fired. <laughs> um, no, no, it's all good. Brandon yeah. Allen was a disaster. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Honestly, like, like was super happy that he was the dude that we were going up against for sure. Um, all right. So. I'm not sure whether or not that you've done a way too early record prediction, like whether or not that you've gone team by team and saying whether or not that that's a win or a loss, but what are you seeing the outcome of the bills and the Broncos game, which fun story. I might be in Denver to watch that game. Fun fact. Yeah. So uh, with the bills versus Broncos game, I've tried going through the schedule multiple times. This is always a game that comes up. I'm like, do I give them a win? Do I give them a loss? Like, yeah. it's really one that I've struggled with. Mm -hmm. I've been safe, and I, I've just been I, – I predict that the Broncos will go 10 and 6. Okay. So, I do think that the Bills will be one of those six losses after going over it multiple times. Nice. It will be in mile high. Which is the reason why? So you why... just got so many subs from that statement, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I mean, the, only, the one thing that might give the Broncos the advantage, well, I guess two things. It is at home, mm -hmm. and it will be later in the season. One of the things I predict with this Broncos team is that they will start slow because they're so young, and with this off season with COVID nineteen, everyone's going to have to be remote. Mm -hmm. virtual OTAs and all that. So I think that there's a pretty good chance that they hit a stride there at the end of the season. But uh, right before we play you guys, we I can't remember what exactly team it is. I think it's the Panthers. So that should be a relatively easy game. But we got to play the Chiefs and the Saints in the two, in the two weeks before that. So that I sucks. think that we might, be, we might be worn down and we might maybe yeah. even underestimate the Bills. So I think we'll be a pretty good team. I've always been a fan of Josh Allen. People always like to make fun of his inaccuracy. But oh, I say, no, like, dude. what the hell? It like, pisses me off. It doesn't matter. It, it, if he's inaccurate, he's winning games. He can get exactly. it done on the ground. 
Who cares if he misses an extra three passes a game if he's going to get you 60 yards on the ground? Not many quarterbacks can do that. Dude, thank you. Thank you. Holy <laughs> shit. Like, honestly, like, PFF, they are the worst. Like, they, they, <laughs> they absolutely roast Josh Allen on a, like, regular basis. I'm, like, this close to putting mm-hmm. out a diss track on PFF. <laughs> Uh, but I mean, it's definitely interesting. Like once you look at Josh Allen and stuff like that, like what a lot of people don't like to talk about is, is that he's led the league two years in a row in drops. So mm-hmm. like, I mean, like perfect passes specifically with Dawson Knox, our tight end, he dropped like 12 last year and say that he were to catch six of those. And Josh Allen would have been over 60% and like in like yeah. the middle of the pack when it comes to completion. percent. So, I mean, but that's a video for another time. <laughs> All right. Uh, but, yep. yo, but yo, Joe, once again, dude, thank you so much for coming on to the channel. Um, Don Mafia, say that you're interested. He puts out a lot of really good Broncos content. I'm going to link his channel in my description. Do me a favor and go sub over there. And besides that, guys, thank you again for tuning in. And above all else, let's go Buffalo.